All right, so in our refined paint layer, we've done almost everything except the tail. So I want to kind of touch everything, try to get everything to a finish. I kind of cleaned up the outside on this background layer. You can see how much work that's doing. And now I keep working on my refined paint. And I'll work on the, the edge of the paws. And you'll also notice I'm not trying to zoom in too much. I zoomed in a lot more on the, the face where the distance between things really mattered. Here I'm trying to cover a lot more ground with each stroke. I was saying in the morning class that one of my traditional painting heroes is John Singer Sargent, who did painting commissions in America in the late 19th and early 20th century. And the things he had to paint to make money were just mostly portraits of wealthy people and their kids and their belongings, not the most interesting subject matter. So he made it all about his painting technique. And in order to be competitive and kind of commercial, to beat out the other painters that were trying to get business, he just worked incredibly quickly. And so every paint stroke he used kind of defined the form just by how hard he pressed, how thick it, it got, and then how he like swirled it off at the end. And he could build like the hat on a person in like six brush strokes that looks finished. It's just very confident and very well placed. And at this stage in digital painting, we really, it's just human nature to kind of tighten up and try to control everything because you're worried about messing up what's underneath. But John Singer Sargent would just take a big brush and just make a mark and let it sit. Right. Carry the paint. So it's not about how much detail, it's about well-observed marks and then trying to keep a general finish and a, uh, not uniformity, but a familiarity with how you use the marks throughout the work. Because right now the tail really looks different than how I've treated it other places and that's what I need to, to finish. And then I'll have a finished painting, but that doesn't need to be the end of the story with digital art because we can keep playing with it and push it in more experimental ways, maybe inspired more by contemporary painting, especially when a lot of the typical kind of digital painting can be mimicked pretty well by artificial intelligence. That really frees us up as artists to make our own distinct styles and marks and choices creatively in our work. Because all the AI can do is just mimic what's out there. What we can do is stand out from what's out there. And the more that the AI gets used, the more it's all going to kind of look high quality, but like it's all from kind of the same mind, the same studio. It'll be sampling from the same data over and over again. What takes the longest in AI is to try to get something that looks unique through lots and lots of, of carefully focused text generation or modifications or even intentionally messing with the coding. I like the navigator because it shows me the overall image as well. So I don't get, you know, lose the, the forest for the trees. And I can see that this refined painting is really making a difference. All right, so now the tail, keep it going. Dark at the end, but pay attention to the direction of the hair. And there's core shadows. 
that can be dark, but they should never go to black. I never try to paint with solid black. So you can't do much with that. So just like if we were in a traditional painting, I'd have you mix your black with alizarin crimson and uh, phthalo green. It gives you a really kind of dark, colorful value that you can use instead of black to give more life to your paintings. Here, I just want to try to find the, the colors and the tones that I can mix into the shadows and highlights to help bring everything together but not lose that life, that energy that I had at the beginning. The pinks are helpful, these cyans and greens. At this lower opacity. And all those paint layers you did earlier, they still help, they still come through. Let's get some highlights on there. So often in finished painting, you want to reass reassert your highlights and your shadows. And then you can kind of mix them back in. And if Photo P slows down on you, just hit Command S, update your work. All right, looking pretty good. Let me see, is there anywhere I need to reassess some of the darks? Maybe add a little bit here, some of that blue in there. And brush it back. Face, is there anywhere I need highlights? Brush it back. All right, so now to clean it up in order to submit, I want to keep it separate from my background. So I'm going to turn on my gray background and get rid of any stray marks. Sometimes, like I did before, I'll use my lasso tool, almost like cutting into the painting. And then you have to know what layer it's from to delete. And it might show you some edges that need work. Often we ignore the edges to our detriment. All right. Sometimes that gray background can help us see lighting things that we don't see on white, because on white everything just looks really dark. And I can fuss with this forever, but as we're getting near the deadline, Now what I want to do is create a layer that's all combined 
with just the cat itself or the subject matter itself. So I'm going to select all those layers, turn the others off, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Layers. It puts it up on top, turn the others off. And in that, I can erase the palette. Don't need that anymore. And then I can just turn on the white background, touch up any last things, look around the edges. Everything is now in one layer, right? So this is a good chance to just refine. I have some hard edges left over from changing the size of the eyes that I can soften. Though I like some of that. I have this little edge here that I need to erase just at 100%. This little one pixel artifact from my, my shifting and warping of the head around the ear. And this is because if I want to print this, like say this was a final project, I don't, I don't want any uh, little edge thing that I missed to distract from what I want the piece to communicate to my audience. Turn on different backgrounds to see the edge. Use your brush where you need it. Add a little nuance or softness. And then you're finished when you think you're finished. It's easy to overdo it. It's better not to overdo it. All right. So at that point, you save it as your PSD with all of those different options in there. We have our refined painting in there. You might even still have your sketch as a layer in there, right? This is just kind of what I've done today. And then once it's clean, I might even take that and I might just move it more towards the center. And now I'm going to save it or export it as a JPEG to put to Canvas. Now, if we look at our image size, we did this at 8 by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. So this is good to print at 8 by 10. It's also good to print probably at 11 by 14 if I wanted to. And then inspired by contemporary painting, I'm going to show you some other things we can do with it. But first, let me post it and finish off the assignment. And we got to that refined painting by lower opacity with a custom brush. Let's take that JPEG, put it in. Now, for your presentation critique, I'm going to ask you to describe your unique digital paint style. And in mine, I just tried to keep the color but maintain the softness and the energy of the brush strokes. So now those are saved and that's the end result, right? So I want to now go back, this is just for fun, inspired by 
what we see in contemporary galleries 